Morning, everyone. So I wanted to to share something with you. Um, I know if any of you saw on Facebook, uh, Christy, my wife, had posted uh, a bunch of pictures that we all drew, and it was stories, miracles in the Bible, and and um, it, it's amazing that even as we were talking about these miracles and how it just seemed to be a conversation, you know, uh, that was going along as everybody was trying to pick out. A different story. We didn't want anybody to do the same story. And so one of those uh, came up in conversation was had to do with fish. And so uh, I made mention, I said, well, you know, you could do the one on Peter catching the fish with the money in his mouth. And most of the kids were looking at me like, I don't know what you're talking about. And, and you know, so it, it, it got to be an, uh, a time and opportunity uh, right, as we talked about before, that an interruption, something that we weren't expecting, could be an opportunity to teach. Um, and so uh, if you looked at them, that's the picture that I ended up doing was because uh, I love this little story. And it's it's very short and maybe you've never heard it before, but I do want to share it with you. And this may be more drawn out over several videos than probably I first anticipated uh, but as I looked at this and you're going to, you might be surprised just these few short verses and, and I just started writing down, the Lord just started speaking to me. And I mean, I have 12 different things that the Lord showed me. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to do one thing today and that's it. And so I want to give you a little background on this and then dive in and then we'll just continue this on, uh, as we go from here. But Matthew chapter 17, uh, verses 24 through 27. And here's, uh, here's what the Bible says. It says, when they had come to Capernaum, those who received the temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? Now, let me just stop right there. And just to let you know, basically what was going on, they'd been gone out of town for a while. They come back in and it passed time for this temple tax to be paid. It was supposed to be a half shekel a piece. And uh, that was the cost uh, for each of them. And so the point is, is they coming back, these who collected, not necessarily tax collectors, but they were collecting for the temple. Uh, and this money was for every male over 20 years old, they would give. And um, basically it would go to help fund uh, getting sacrifices and things like that. A lot of revenue comes in this way uh, for the temple tax. Um, so that's what's going on. So they notice that they don't come to they don't come to Jesus and ask him. I don't know if maybe they were trying not to embarrass Jesus as he was um, the teacher, right? And maybe, or maybe they were just really trying to get inside track. I don't know, but that's not important at the at, at the moment. So they say, "Does your teacher not pay the temple tax?" So notice what Peter says in verse twenty five. He said, "Yes." And when he came, uh, he had come into the house, Jesus anticipated him saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes from their sons or from strangers? And Peter said to him, from strangers. And Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Nevertheless, lest we offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. And when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. So, like I said, I mean, just a few short verses in this in this story. But there's a lot that we can take from it. Um, so today, I just want to share with you, uh, if our word for the day had to be anything, it would be ignorance. Now, I mean, that'll bless you. You know, no matter what time of the day you're watching this, just just hearing the accusation at all of, of, of ignorance. Uh, but think about, see, when Peter, when they came to Peter, he didn't know the answer. Uh, I mean, really, he, he was really just jumping ahead and going ahead of God. And, and I just have written down that the, our first thing is, is in his ignorance, Peter spoke out of turn. He very simply could have said a couple of things. He, one, he could have said, I don't know. You need to ask Jesus. Or he could have said, you know what? I don't know, but let me go ask Jesus and I'll get back to you and let you know. But no, instead, Peter just comes up in his own mind. And I guess probably with the pressure of not wanting to seem like that Jesus was going against the temple, that of course, of course, he would pay this temple tax. But see, whether or not Jesus goes into explaining, and we'll get into that later, 
of whether or not he really owed it or not. But that was beside the point. Uh, right now, the problem is, is that Peter ran ahead of God like he did so much in Scripture. And like, honestly, like many of us do so many times. But see, the problem is, is that he answered it and it was more out of ignorance than a, a misunderstanding. See, it wasn't like he asked Jesus and Jesus said that, well, yes, we should be free. And then Peter told him, well, he really doesn't owe it, but he's going to pay it anyway. It, it wasn't anything like that. See, Peter gave an answer for something he didn't know the answer for. And so often today you say, now, what does this have to do with me? Nobody's asking me, does Jesus pay a temple tax? And I haven't heard him tell me to go down here and go fishing and find some money. Although some of us now, if you, if I told you that, maybe we all go fishing, right? Looking for some money. But, but here's where I think the application comes into you and I. A lot of times we are tempted to answer biblical questions, not based on God's word, but based on our minds, on our thoughts, on our thought process. It, this would be the time that somebody asks you or that somebody says something about Jesus and you said, oh, yeah, that's true. Or, oh, no, that's not true. I mean, whatever the case may be, whatever the that statement is or that question that is that they ask you. And you say based on your thoughts or your interpretation without going to God's word. Now, for so many Christians, uh, and especially like with social media and stuff like that, where we can share stuff so instantly, which is great. But at the same time, if we if we run ahead of God, if we speak out of turn like Peter did, then we are doing more damage to the cause of uh, to the um, to the cause right to Christianity. We're doing more damage than we are good, because now what the world sees is, well, wait a minute, the Christians can't even agree on what they're saying. But see, if we're going first to God's word and then giving an explanation, then we'll all be on the same page because God's word is alive, right? And it's going to tell us his spirit is moving in us. And if we're uh, believers in him, then we have the same spirit, you and I. And that means that he'll tell us the same thing. He, we don't serve a God of chaos. Uh, he's going to tell us the same thing. Now, here's the thing. Now, you say, well, there's a lot of different interpretations out of there. Yes, there are for a lot of different things. But when it comes to the gospel message and the way that God looks at things, how often, just think about it, how often have you told somebody an explanation and it was based more on your interpretation and your feelings or your thoughts than it was on God's word? Well, you know, I think it says this somewhere in scripture. But does it? I mean, that's how so many people believe that money is the root of all evil. And they say, well, that's in the Bible. Well, not really. Bible says for the love of money is the root of all evil. See, that changes it completely. But see, that's just that's just an example. So uh, if anything, if, if your word of encouragement today could be don't answer anybody out of ignorance. Right. And I mean, it's it's OK that we don't know. I've been asked plenty of times. I've been asked questions that I really just didn't know the answer to or I didn't know how to give them the correct biblical answer. And so here's what you say. When somebody asks you a question that you don't know the answer to, this is especially for believers. Here's what you say. I don't know. <laughs> that was deep and profound. I know. It's just what you needed. But but to think about it this way, you, you could do like Peter, right? Instead of say, just answering right out, you could say, okay, well, let me let me talk to Jesus and I'll get back to you, right? So instead, and you say, look, I don't know the answer to your question, but give me a little while. Let me look. Uh, let me get some help from other believers. We can dive into God's word together and look and really search out what God is saying. And then I'll get back to you. See, we got to follow up instead of going ahead of God, because I, I do want to encourage us all as believers. Look, we don't we don't need to do more damage to the cause of Christ just by opening our mouths out of ignorance and what we think we understand, right? We're, we're not going to understand it all. And by saying this, I am in no way saying that I understand it better than anybody else. But what I do understand is that it's imperative that we come to God's word first and foremost before we give an answer for anything. So let's not be ignorant. 
right? God says in James, he tells us that, look, any of you who lacks wisdom, right? Ask him and he gives graciously and abundantly to all those who ask. So we have no excuse of being ignorant. We need to come to the God of all wisdom. And so I pray that you'll go to him today. Amen. God bless you and have a great day.